Hello everyone and welcome back to the ESL Weekly Cup number 73. I am Jebro and with me this evening I have a Mr. Divok. How are you doing sir? Are you good? I'm doing grand, thank you. How are you? I am awesome, Sauce. And actually <laughs> remembering <laughs> some of these account names now as we um, will quickly nip into the game and show you some of these team members. We have uh, the scores are wrong and the team names are wrong as well. So I am aware of that just before anyone says anything. I was there first, so <laughs> screw you. Um, <laughs> basically, we have, uh, if I saw Guns and Tools there, who is a uh, different account now, actually, so what I thought it was going to be. Um, but yeah, good to see him, actually. A very good engineer. This is a good man as well. And he's kind of sleeping in a random area here. I'm not sure yeah, what where, he's where is he? doing. But anyway. And uh, Renner, we've seen playing various teams recently as well. He's not very consistent. Um, but we're going to have to see what he comes out with. I'm just going to quickly update this scoreboard just as we're talking. And they were called Red Team, so why not? They're on the Red Team. That would make sense. And we'd be I true mean, to the nature. Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Awesomeness. Just yes. to confuse us. But yeah, if any of you were looking at the brackets and did look at this team and were in just as confused as I was when you saw all those account names and just thought, who the. In God's name of these guys. Um, as soon as Jebro saw it, he was like, oh yeah, I know these guys. I, I sort of drew a blank. I was like, oh, I, I have no idea. Now I'm seeing their in-game names, it's becoming much more clear. So I'm assuming the other three, I probably will also know. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, I mean, right, Curve, I Curve's yeah. been in and out of some teams as well. Um, he was in, was he in TCG for a very short period? God, I can't remember. I think it was him. <laughs> there was a team where he was... I think it was Curve, Honey, and uh, da, 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 a couple of other guys. I can't remember. The, everyone switches so much. It's just absolutely insane. Amsterdam's actually on Amsterdam. I, was he playing a uh, Elementalist or a Warrior? Wondering what he's going to play tonight. But at the moment, we have Curve. He's going to be playing uh, Elementalist, which is what he normally does play. More than likely, he's going to be Dagger Dagger, of course. Um, he's going to be playing with the Holbrook Runes. So that's going to be the very sustainable class in their team. Then we've got the DP Thief uh, of Renner coming in. Sorry, SD. SD. Ooh. Wow, people are starting to move back to this again. We saw this yesterday. I hope so. This is very interesting to watch. It's horrible to play against, but very interesting oh. to watch. Horrible to play against isn't even the word. <laughs> I, was, uh, I, I can't use the word. <laughs> it's not as bad as the turret NG. Maybe but... <laughs> that's why he's crying. He knows what he's doing to us. He feels sorry for us all. It's very avoidant, this build. It's hard to pin down, really hard to nail down. And, you know, Size is one of those guys who really, really, really sold this build to the world, in, if anything, because he was just so effective with it and horrible. And Amsterdam is playing Warrior. He's going for the Shout Bow Warrior as well. Um, God, wow! I really shouldn't read chat halfway through thinking that was that was not a fun <laughs> thing to uh, read very randomly. We are waiting for that final member to come in as well. So we have uh, Celestial, we have Celestial NG, we have SD Thief, we have Dagger Dagger Elementalist, and we have Shadow Warrior. So DPS must be the next. Yes. Who was the final person that we're not thinking of? It's oh, there we go. Oh no. Okay. It's Ilya Molotov. It's a oh, Ilya. Il Il okay, <laughs> playing the big massive Norn dudes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. That is fantastic. I cannot remember if he played an engineer last time. I'm I'm kind of tempted to say that he played played a big massive <laughs> Mesmer once kind of tempted to say that I think so but that's interesting that's very sustainable team with a lot of avoidance like in terms and of a thief. lot of CC oh god that is so much CC their CC is disgusting they've got a warrior that's taken fear me as well and I'm actually Ouch. interested to see I mean this is where prototype is just going to be so key he can survive a lot more against these there's going to be so much cleave though but he can survive quite well because there's not one that can really come in with a ton of burst to take him out He's very quickly. on condition. He's changed the condition. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. 
I just saw exactly the, the same utilities and just assumed. <laughs> oh, no, because I didn't look at... Oh, he's gone back to Plague. I actually think Power and my Necro might actually be quite nice. It would be pretty nice, especially it's... with that... I mean, he's got pulsing stability from both, but that he wouldn't. the engineers mm. wouldn't be an issue for him, the warrior wouldn't be an issue for him, the Ellie wouldn't be an issue. He would literally just have to watch out for that Dagger Thief. And if, yeah. that, he, if that Dagger Thief gets caught with an auto-attack while not dodging, he's just going to fall flat on his face anyway. They've got a lot of Condi cleanse as well on this team. With the thieves, and with the, sorry, with the uh, elementalists there, they've got I don't know the engineers to a degree. You know they can remove some condies, but they've sustained enough that they don't have to worry too much about it. But if they get loaded up, I mean that conditions versus the engineers is horrible. You know that's still not a fun thing. Yeah, but and especially if Protoss uh, rotates with another person, such as Arjuneer or Knight or Tiki or even Artful Panda, if he's rotating with two people, mm. then the, the engineer has to deal with either CC or damage on top of those conditions which he cannot cleanse um, which should bring him down relatively quickly yeah. um, on a map like this where it's re where it's quite nice to rotate across um, we might see the the red thief being able to come to their aid quite often and of course he will well, he won't actually be able to eat prototype alive because prototype can just put conditions on himself which I mean, a, sword, a sword, sword dagger thief is good at dodging a lot of things but Dodging conditions that a Necro can put out on top of himself is is very difficult, especially seeing as that's where you want to be attacking. You don't want to be dodging on top of the Necro. You want to be dodging to the Necro and then mm. attacking him. Um, and of course, there's nothing yeah, you can really do to mitigate that now 60-second cooldown fear from the Root of Nightmare. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you could chain it up. It would be nice for him to really go up against... Um, or be going with someone with CC. Like, that would be nice. Even a pin down from the warrior would be nice. But, like, maybe with the engineer, that would be good. Because, I don't know, he's a bit more mobile than him. But he's he can keep up a little bit more with the uh, with the engineer, I guess, than the thief. But if they yeah. can lock people down, you know, use that rifle number two. Get a knockdown with the fourth skill. get Or get the slick shoes on someone. And then, God, there's so much on the engineer. Oh. Just anything, almost, an yeah. ability from the engineer. <laughs> And then he can do something. But if they do and we did that, actually see Argineer rotating a lot last game. Like you see a lot of engineers, yeah. they will I either the engineer or the elementist will be the sort of solo point holder. But I don't think I saw Argineer sort of holding a point by himself once. In fact I'm pretty sure Artful Panda was holding points more often than Argineer was last game. He got very involved. He got very involved indeed. I mean he's quite he does mobile. Get involved. I mean with the uh, <laughs> he loves to get involved. <laughs> oh my god! What? What is that tag about? Did you mention that before? No. What is the tag? Is that say Jeb? Oh, the, the, yeah, the Jeb tag. <laughs> what? It says uh, best caster multiverse, I believe. <laughs> I just <laughs> noticed the tag. <laughs> yeah, Knight, and I think, is Bless it Prototype or Argeneer running it? Bless it's Argeneer. Bless your hearts. It's the, it's the French guys, because we casted their tournament last week, which was really <laughs> fun, actually. <laughs> You did you you casted one of those days as well, didn't you? Yeah, I casted yeah, the so the week before you. Yeah, was it nice. was very interesting. Um, running a lot of stranger comps um, and even stranger builds. So nice to see like new teams and new players. I love it. I really, really, really would urge you guys to get involved in these ESL weeklies. You can see there's four teams in tonight. There's no big names. If you if you literally enter the day after the Go Four Monthly, you're pretty much guaranteed that the top of those those top teams are going to be in, and you can and maybe if that's the worry for some teams that you are going to go against people who you can't defeat. I will say this as well: they are completely defeatable because I've seen it happen and I've witnessed it. Um, people have taken games off these guys, and you just need to give yourself a chance because you guys are good players. We have a, so many good players in this scene that need to just get involved and get in there, you know, just yeah. get a team together. If you have a bunch of mates, have a laugh, you know. I've been entering tournaments and going out in the first round in the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah, we I, have been. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Me, me and Divock last week, I got a little bit disappointed, but it was kind of fun just to enter it and just practice and just have a laugh with your yeah, buddies, exactly. you know. Um, and if you do need to step up, there is the 2v2 on Tuesdays as well. If you don't happen to have four friends, first of all, I apologize for not having <laughs> If you don't friend. happen to Secondly, have four friends. if you have one friend, 
then just bring them along to the 2v2. Everyone's got As one friend. The match is starting soon and we haven't got a hospital, so I guess we'll do that in the next one. Um, <laughs> we do have our grand final of the ESL Weekly Cup, number 73, as Jebro is laughing to himself about something. I will let him go over the splits once they are happening. Awesome job. So we're going to see blue team and coming out, we're also going to see the red team in this map. See how they split? Kind of interested to see how red team are going to go with this. They're going to be defensive over on the quarry, which I'm kind of surprised about. They've got such a sustained team. They could just go one, you know, one free one or whatever, just to actually going to see Curve jumping into mid. That's the obvious choice. They're stealthed up blue team, but they're going to jump in as soon as possible. Prototype stealthed is going to come out of that quite soon. There you go. Just nips into the mid. Actually going up in against the elementalist there. So he's going to switch up his positioning because he really needs to. Out of any of the targets on this team, he needs to really get involved with an engineer, to be fair. I would feel like a better rotation, but he's not actually going to And speaking of that. engineers, they are in a lot of trouble yeah. over here at the mine point as Ela is already down. Artful Panda was just able to sort of stand out of all of the AoEs, stand out of both of the Slick Shoes. Meanwhile, it was Arjuneer just tanking everything on point and eventually bringing one down. Artful Panda is going to go down as well, but Ela is very nearly dead himself. They are going to go for Rez, Artful Panda blinking away the last to, second. Very nice move there. He's to be careful. Ilya is so low himself. Arjuneer with a knockback. Oh, on the pull from Ilya. Now he needs to get... Oh, he's trying to pull Arjuneer away from dropping those grenades. Guns and Tools just could not get the little heel off. And now we can actually see Artful Panda think about moving. He's actually going to come back up and finish this off. Because, you know what, Guns and Tools is good enough to regenerate himself and just stay back on that point. With that Elixir gun as well. But the thief is going to stay. He's going to take him out. And that's a good job from, uh, from the blue team there. Good job indeed. And they won, they've won the, the Waterfall node, and now they're going to be able to plus one onto this mid node as well. They're going to have 3v2 in this situation. And actually, we're going to see a, a retreat, or at least a small move away by Rihanna, who's going to go for this Waterfall node. Not sure if she's going to actually be able to bring down uh, the Elementalist stood there, though. So she, she is going to come back onto this mid point and offer up a bit of DPS. Of course, like we said, she is in that Sword Dagger, so even though it, she's in these massively outnumbered fights, she's mm. able to sustain pretty well, because no one can really pin her down. Not at all. And we actually saw, um, it was in the position of uh, the prototype there, as just as he gets chased away by Renner. Um, he was up top and doing a good job actually in a range position, which not many people use. You know, you see the health staffs and the um, prototypes kind of using these positions up here, and also Renner just then to get a good vantage point as well. But we did see someone coming in. One of the engineers on the red team was trying to plant some AoE cleave down on Prototype so he couldn't free cast over on the top. So that's a good position to actually be aware of because Prototype really gets into those spots. And again, you know, repositioning himself with that Flesh Worm into that position where he could just get back on to the offensive in a way, drop those marks down onto the node, onto a big point where, you know, if he decides to cart around, which is what he has to do to survive, He's limiting that space, which is actually a really good job and really good usage of those marks. But I don't feel like Prototype's getting fully utilised in this point at the moment, to be honest. No, like I said, if he was Power Necro, then he would be able to, to help out quite a lot more. Although, a massive shout out to Artful Panda. I'm pretty sure she's been practising how to kill engineers because every single time <laughs> Ilya comes on comes into this 1v1, or even as 2v2 as that one was, Artful Panda manages to dodge and dive and duck away from the enemy thief and get the kill within a matter of seconds, and, and the waterfall node is there yet again. So, Alpha Panda is now going to rotate to the other side and look for the other engineer. Alpha Panda must have had a pretty nasty uh, week of going up against turret engineers or something because she's out for the she's on the kill, she's on the prowl. It's a good like. Especially if the engine is lost all his cooldowns, like he's just used his toolkit number four, right? So that's a big block used and gone. So now Guns and Tools has to distance himself significantly. He has to line of sight. He has to try and dodge around. Now we're actually going to see this nice almost 1v1 between Renner and Artful Panda there. Artful Panda's got a bit more damage, but obviously Renner's got a little bit more avoidance. So he can put that SR down, probably get some nice HP back. But while he's doing that, Guns and Tools is going to go into the downstate on the quarry. And uh, we have seen the decap. Um, Blue team really are dominating here. Red team have are lacking damage. They can't end these fights. They just cannot end them. And the one the thief's in at the moment, they, they're lost. They ha he has to actually go back towards the mid. I really feel as if they're lacking a lot of damage here. Yeah, and like you said, Rena is that only uh, damage option. And even on a sword dagger, she's struggling to catch up with people. She's <laughs> jumping mm. all across the map. She's 
two of her leaps there to try and catch up with Prototype. The Prototype, with one quick click of that uh, Flesh Worm, was able to just completely mitigate and escape that damage. They don't have enough damage sources. I'm, I'm pretty mm. sure they have enough damage. Of course, Celestial Engineers can put out a decent amount of damage themselves. They just don't really have the, the big damage sources. As soon as you see Rihanna coming, uh, Rihanna coming rather, you just act a little bit defensive and you should be fine. As Knight is doing here, just he sees Rihanna coming, he knows he's in trouble, he's going to back off point until reinforcements come. And here's Artful Panda, and now they can That's turn this better. around. Rena's in the wrong position, she's going to get hit by that uh, static shield there, and he's going to be forced to blow a lot of cooldowns just to get out. Yeah, indeed. But as, just as he was distancing himself, we did see some nice uh, combinations coming out from the rest of the guys on the red team over on the mid. We saw a nice pull on the prototype. Prototype did go down, we saw a banner coming out as well. Just going to double check that that is indeed what happened. It is. Uh, Tiki coming into the point there for some great support, and he's going to be able to go. He's thinking about going over towards Waterfall. Waterfall Panda probably doesn't want to stay involved in that point now as Red Team start to get back into the game, but 200 points ahead. And uh, I'm going to call. I'm going to start calling Fofire something else. Late comeback map. I don't know. Something orientated around that because <laughs> the team seems to take a massive lead, and then teams, the other team will come back in a really, really good position. But it's so late in the game, or there's such a massive lead that, you know, they've just not got enough time to actually bring it back completely. We've got one cap apiece now, blue team's taking over the quarry. So red team did get a few points back, but now they need to do something on mid. And now they're actually, as a team, they can fully... Look at the cleave coming out from those guys. They just go towards Tiki as well. So much. Yeah, those two engineers, there's so much cleave that they can do. And of course... The, the grenades that would do a lot of damage that are on the longer cooldown, they now have two of them. Yeah. Um, and Tiki can cleanse one poison tick, maybe, but the second one he's going to have to waste another shout or another warhorn skill on, and eventually he's just going to out, out Condi, especially um, when when both of them are on his tail. And uh, if Red, Red Team now have this two cap, if they manage to get this three cap, I'm officially renaming this map Legacy of the Throw Fire. Yeah, that's good. That is, that is actually a really good name. <laughs> Not like, but I mean, what, what's happened here is actually very good for the red team because blue team in the end went to the big team fight. Blue team don't want to do that. They want to keep. They want to even keep them on free nodes so they can beat them in the small skirmishes because red team can sustain the team fights a lot more. They've got a lot of sustain. They've got a lot of support if they get together. And you can see it's happening again. It happened over on the mid to a degree, and they moved it over towards the waterfall onto a point that they control. So now they've got the warrior on the other side of the map who can hold that point very well, and the rest of the team fighters as well sustaining this point and getting some slow kills. But they're kills, and that's what's bringing them back into the map now. They've come back by a hundred points in the space of like three or four minutes and blue team need to be careful I feel that they need to support they need to start pushing over towards the quarry to split these guys up because there's no sustain in terms of the HP being raised here um, prototypes gonna go down just on the north side of the waterfall Arjun is gonna kind of try and go for the res also Tiki as well a nice knock by comes out and they form the updraft as well and they're gonna have to actually just leg it out of here they need to leave this fight now or earlier than yeah. now really Red team, like you say, they have this sustain, but also when they drop too low, they can just rotate out. For example, yeah. Guns and Tools dropped about 25% health there, um, but just used any mobility he had to pull as far away as physically possible. And in the face of uh, of um, of Big D here, were sorry, Asda's here. It is Asda's, yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> in the face of them, were, were <laughs> just a wall of Celestials that they couldn't get past, of course, with plenty of CC, because there's another engineer there. They, they cannot finish that gap. Of course, they have one gap closer, which is their damage dealer, and they are actually going to close the gap on guns and tools here, so there's another caster's curse for you. As I say, he gets away. He does eventually get brought down. That just that proves my point. Three players <laughs> by himself, so he did bring a bunch of players over here, and this is Red maybe overextending yes. a little bit. Sort of, okay, they won the team fight there, and now they're going for the cheeky three cap, and they were a bit, bit too, too much cheek there. Um, Why? Not I mean, quite at that stage. Yet. We we literally said it as well, like three or four minutes ago. If they stretch them to three nodes, they will start to kill them. That is exactly what just <laughs> happened. They pushed too far. They like exactly what you said. They overcommitted. Why did they do that? They just came into the map holding two nodes. They supported well. Blue team didn't push them on another point, so that they had to push them mid. Just hold it. 
You know, you can sustain long enough that you can support. You can't plus one or two often with this team. But, you know, I mean, that's going to be the job of the thief if, if he gets involved. Render's actually over on the quarry now trying to defend that with Ilya, which should be okay here against Partful Panda. We're going to see Ilya dropping out some nice healing as well. And Renner can get back up quite quickly in that build and actually drop some cleave down with the short bow on that Shadow Refuge. He's probably going to go over towards, or think about going over towards the uh, waterfall. Look at Red Team's HP, though. And those conditions just get taken away quite quickly this is very close this has been a really a comeback for the red team it's looking good for them and blue team are kind of getting suckered into this waterfall point again if i were them maybe they should have pushed over towards the quarry not too sure send some guys into I, mean, I think they were happy that they they drew out the big cooldown the banner was used to bring kev back up they did get brilliant burst down on him but mm. it was 3v1 at that point now it's a 3v3 and there are even more people <laughs> rotating now so this is the sort of team fight scenario that you were talking about and although when you said look at the health bars they were both both teams had pretty much full health bars yeah, you've got to remember that one team has far less toughness and far less vitality than the other. So even though mm. it's a full health bar, they are certainly uh, down on health. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's... Over here now, Amsterdam's coming in to support this point. They've done a nice rotation. That's... So, like, earlier from when he was holding over on the quarry and that's a, actually a really intelligent move from Red Amsterdam has the big supportive cooldown of that banner and it's a, it's a great place for him to be in and now he can actually remove those conditions as well so you've got the Ellie removing conditions you've got Amsterdam moving conditions prototypes coming over here he's not going to be massively useful in all honesty he needs to rotate and go for a 1v1 with the engineer surely and if he pushes that then um, maybe the rest of the blue team can think about trying to hold over on this waterfall but it's not massively essential but blue team now have lord range so that could also be an option as well yeah and they do have that extra damage of course it is only a condition necro so they don't necessarily have the burst damage and there's plenty of cleanse that uh red team can offer up here mm. uh, they may have pulled out at a decent time as well they seem to be getting guns and tools pretty low Prototype hasn't taken too much damage either, so they really need to start focusing on saying that though. He does start to fall for a bit of a CC chain, is going to pull away with the uh, the flesh one there. Although Guns and Tools is straight back on top of him, not giving him any space there whatsoever. And all the while, okay. they've been, there's been a big push over towards the uh, the mine here, uh, the quarry rather, and uh, Renner's gone down. So that's the damage of, of Red Team, just completely mitigated here. And it's going to be Amsterdam and Iliad holding off against three. Uh, of course, Arpa Panda's quite low, but she can just back off whenever she pleases. Although he gets pulled in by nice. Ilya, doesn't even think he's going to get the pull, so just walks away. <laughs> Sat oh. there, he could have uh, possibly turned it around with a kill on Arpa Panda. Uh, yeah, got rallied there with the uh, down onto Amsterdam. So good job from those guys. Blue team had to overcommit though to try and get back into the map and pull the red team away. And that's when they started to get the kills, get them onto three nodes and win those small skirmishes. But because they had to do that, Ren has got the free cap over on mid. No one's really reacting. He's going to get the full cap. Blue team, I feel like they should. I feel like the red team is just going to come back and in the end win it on the caps, although they can't sustain on mid until someone gets there. Q Amsterdam is going to just come into the point using that war horn, of course, to get that extra swiftness to get to the point as soon as possible. Nice cleave comes in out from him, forcing Artful Panda to potentially get out of here with the short bow. Um, we have seen Ilya going down over on the quarry as well, so blue team picking up that side node and possibly even the quarry, uh, so the waterfall as well. Should be okay to pick up this node. Alpha Panda with a questionable engage there jumps on top of Ker Curb rather, who was pretty much full health at the time. Guns and Tools with a low target, and in jumping on Curb, Guns and Tools just turn around with a massive load of grenades right on top of uh, Alpha Panda. But he does, of course, by turning around to go on top of him, realise that it's not just two enemies there. He's actually against four people, and now they're just going to leave Amsterdam here to, I assume, die, preferably slowly and on point. Although he does try to pull away. Maybe a bit of a mistake there. You want to try and make sure you do get downed on point to force your enemy to finish you quickly. Um, but we just have one cap for the blue currently. They're just going to slowly take this one to the end if Red Cat can't sort of group up and go for that sustaining team fight. Yeah, there we go. I just, I, I just saw earlier moving, and that's what I would do, but... They're so sustained and kind of dead on the map, especially with, you know, their thief needs to get there quickly. Their prototype comes into the 1v1 that he should have definitely been involved in. He was he was actually going for the engineers mainly uh, towards the end of that game there, but good decision. Renner now as well. Free cap, 475. 
They need to kill that Lord very quickly, and they've not got the burst to do it. I don't think that's going to be possible. We've only got 10 points, and as soon as I've said 10 points, it's almost more. <laughs> it's almost yeah. the end of the game because the free cap is strong. Blue team are back in force to defend. There is no chance in hell of them getting that kill, and we are going to see blue team pick it up. But the red team comeback was very real indeed. Yeah, they very nearly got it there, and like we both said, maybe just a bit of an overextension. If they'd kept it to the side points, then they may well have been able to, to come back and end up winning this one. Um, in terms of a Lord push, they had a lot of cooldowns ready. They had both crates soon to be up, um, but I think Guns and Tours made the call, and as you were saying, that you know, the three cap is strong and they're at four. I think it was when they got to four, seven, five, Guns and Tours just sort of stood still and started jumping around. Hmm. Um, but while he was doing so, I noticed that he was running Elixir Gun. So maybe he's not running slick shoes, or maybe he changed that right at the end. Um, Guns and Tools. I didn't notice. Guns and yes. Tools, yeah, running. Uh, he normally. He's not really changed ever much. So he likes the Elixir Gun. I remember talking to him one day about that. It was a while back, though. He really likes Elixir Gun. That's all I remember. And it's, it's so much. Of which, and that, did, that did has reminded me, you do need to go through Red Team's builds once they are back in gear. Red Team's builds. We went through them. Did we? Yeah. <laughs> That's what we were talking about, SD. Yeah, 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 but we didn't, we, they weren't a complete composition when we were talking about them. We were still waiting on one person, I think. Maybe. <laughs> going completely bonkers. Yeah. Really I remembered dangerous. something. Um, <laughs> I'm back you'll in have the game. to bear with me. <laughs> it's all good. No, no, no. I, I get what you mean. It's on when you're casting and stuff. And to be honest, there's. It's kind of going back even like to the heavy sustained. So the heavier sustain, sorry, uh, celestial lineup. But we can go through those guys again and just remind everyone who's going what builds they are running. We are going to see Ilya switching up Rune now. Um, Rune of Scavenging is very, very nice. And that got a little bit of a fix recently because there was a bit of a problem with the healing, uh, the steel on that life force. As I remember someone telling me, and I was testing, it didn't feel like it was working properly, but I couldn't think where it was apparently when you died i think there was something about the uh steel um not working when you respawned after your first death but it worked up to the first death otherwise it is very nice um that health that really helps you to sustain and also the condi extra condi on that build is very nice so that might be nice to see it's gone for the extra doom there on the rifle as well Curve is going for the standard Dagger Dagger Elementalist, going with the uh, Sigil of Battle. That Sigils are kind of interchangeable. Um, really, that, that Doom kind of sticks a lot more than the Sigil of Battle, actually, as well. Of course, that did get nerfed down to uh, two stacks instead of three. So it's a bit strong with the old uh, Sully Elementalist. Again, being so sustainable and able to stack that might, that was definitely a welcome change. Guns and Tools is going to be going for pretty much the same build as he went before. He's going to be going for Elixir Gun with the Power Wrench trait, where he does reduce those cooldowns and also gets a bit more damage. Goes for the Intelligence still on the Sigil on the rifle, which is still very good. You know, he can combo that up nicely with that Grenade Barrage and uh, some different abilities to give him some nice bursty damage as well. So, still kind of going for sustain. Are they going to go for more damage here, do you think? I mean, they've got the two Engineers and the Elementalist out already, so... I don't think they changed the Warrior. No. The Warrior was, as you said, as soon as that Warrior came into that one team fight over in Waterfall, it was a done deal. Like Red Team had that in the bag because they had that big cooldown in terms of the war banner to bring someone up, and they had so much cleanse, which, as you say, engineers are not necessarily uh, too good at. I'm just going to quickly check, yeah, Prototype is back on Power Necro. Okie dokie. I think that's... I mean, they won the last game, it was working. But maybe he didn't feel as useful in that situation. I think, you know, he was involved in the early split, like over on the mid. Which in the end, you know, they did win out on, um, so it was okay in the end. But I do think that with this sustain, and if they get in that, in that position where they're against four members, they just need a tiny bit more extra burst rather than the overall condi, because they had so many people just taking away those conditions <laughs> that they weren't doing yeah. any damage, <laughs> you know. And, that and was equally kind of with with only the one DPS on the enemy team, mm. the the sort of glass the master or glass cannons the power necro as we were saying before who's very easy to train down and kill if there is only one sword dagger thief who's being told to burst down a billion targets at once prototype's gonna have plenty of space to just range there in death ride or even in lich form 
and just press one and win the fight without sure. the uh, the enemy sword dagger thief even being able to find him because he's too busy bursting down the engineer that's nearly dead or, or whatever he happens to be doing at the time. Might be lucky enough to even clip the thief with one of those one, <laughs> with one of those yeah, shots exactly. as well. So yeah, that's although it's a sword dagger thief. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's maybe they spend ninety percent of the time dodging. <laughs> just like run around and randomly hit one. You might hit him not. I'm not going to bring him down very well. <laughs> he was doing a good job. I do believe he was having a few lag issues. Um, they reported that he has having some problems. But I'm not sure that that's the overall problem in that last game for the red team. I, I think, you know, the the big problem which we spoke about quite a lot was the fact that the, the damage is not really there. And obviously if your thief is lagging, that's going to really add to that. Um, we do have Amsterdam still on Jack Warrior. So we are just waiting for the player that was apparently lagging to get back into game. Um, equally, it's strange to see them not do the t tiny changes to these builds that can add more damage. With four sustain, you would think that Amsterdam can possibly move from taking destruction of the empowered, because of course the enemy don't have too many boons to share, um, and maybe even taking mm. reckless dodge, which is something that you see the Americans do an awful lot, um, and the Europeans do a bit less of. He does still have the intelligence digit on the Sword Warhorn though, so he does have a bit of damage. Um, the engineers, of course, Guns and Tools is taking Elixir Gun, which outright can improve your damage, but of course with Slick Shoes it is really nice if you can catch someone within that and just sort of sp start spamming grenades on top of them. Um, but with two mm -hmm. engineers he shouldn't have too much trouble uh, landing grenades. And then of course there's Ilya who is going with Slick Shoes, so they do still have that option. Um, and they do, But the engineers themselves of course have plenty of damage, although one is running less CC and has more damage in terms of the intelligence sigil that he's taken and indeed the rune that he's taken. Whereas Ilya has the CC and the Condi pressure as well as the lifesteal. So Ilya's going to be a bit more survivable than, than Guns and Tools, but Guns and Tools has Elixir Gun. So like I said, it's it's a personal preference yeah. thing. Guns and Tools hasn't changed too much. Uh, it seems Ilya's running a bit closer to the meta, but is still running scavenger runes, which is an adaptation of the meta. I think... Overall, I mean, as as an engineer player, I'd give the survivability actually to Guns and Tools just because he's got the uh, because of that rune of the whole break with the minus twenty percent condition duration. That minus twenty percent is really really good. Like it's really good. And whether or not Ilya gets enough HP back with those life steals because there's a bit of a cooldown on those with the twenty five and then the ten. Uh, still quite sure. Um, but he's still not got that Condi removed, but he's got the extra damage. Um, and, you know, sometimes the extra damage is survivable in itself. If you can actually kill the other guy before you have, then you survived, and that's the end of the game. Um, and also, but with that Elixir Gun, you've got that nice heal where you can get some retaliation as well if you do get the um, the blasts off, of course. I mean, it's it's nice. I, I miss Pistol Shield as well, <laughs> if I'm honest. <laughs> We and if you miss Pistol about... Shield, come along for the 2v2s. I'm pretty sure we haven't had a single 2v2 without Pistol Shield showing up. <laughs> yeah, actually. Pistol Shield I Engineer is that. absolutely rampant in 2v2s. <laughs> it's good for the um, the blast heals, like the, the amount of heal you can get off the blast in the uh, yeah. water fields as well. And there is even one team that runs it with bomb kits for the initial yeah, blast the stealth, stealth engage. <laughs> I thought so. Yeah, it's, it's so <laughs> useful. I remember I was in that 2v2 actually with uh, Tayskin. I, I can't remember if we used... He used uh, pistol shield. That's right, and I we used the bombs and uh, the stealth was really nice. I'm still I'm li really want to see that back in five v fives, but grenades are just too strong. And then actually Carver plays uh, with bombs, but he doesn't play with. Does he play with pistol shield? I can't remember. He played just there. Wow, I have to go back and look at that. But we are still waiting. We had just having a bit of a problem with one of the players' uh, lag issues. Oh, they are back in. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> Let's go. Woohoo. And hasn't changed the build whatsoever, so that's still runner, still running the sword dagger, so we're not gonna see any changes in class compositions. Of course the one change we do have from last game is the prototype going back to the power necro from the condition necro. But other than that, it is the same old story and we should be getting our game away as soon as they hit that big flashy yellow button. Let's do it guys. Or green button. Whatever colour it is. <laughs> Whatever the colour they want it to be. They might not be able to see the colour properly. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, neither can I. If they can't, it's a button. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, okay. Hit the big thing to the left side of the box. That would make sense. Hmm. Come on, guys. Let's do this. Let's get involved. 
final of the ESL Weekly Cup number 73 as the are picking up the first game there. Red Team having a few issues and if you're wondering why they're called Red Team, it's not a mistake. They are called Red Team and they are on the Red Team. So that makes life easier, <laughs> especially because <laughs> that might get a little bit randomly confused. Um, okay, everyone's ready. Except to you. <laughs> Ilya, right, so, right. there we go. As well, something to note, I keep calling, it, I'm calling Ilya, Ilya, because that is the character's name, but that is Napsor, and many people remember Napsor the guy I was talking about earlier, so I do, I, I'm sorry about that, I've never actually mentioned that, but that is Napsor, and uh, he normally, he used to play in Asura, so, you know, he's gone for the opposite. We're going to go through the splits now, Devos going to take us what's going on through this map in the ESL Weekly Final, number 73. So this is game two between Red Team and Asdas, as we are currently calling them. Uh, we're going to see the elements list of Knight going on to midpoint. He did this last game and didn't come up against any opposition, but this time it's going to be an Ellie v Ellie, so that's going to last quite a while. And instead, the aggressive split seems to be going towards the far node for blue team here. They're going to try and take this off them early. Uh, Alpha Panda doesn't really want to know where he, he he's just sort of bouncing between two points. And we do have the Lich form on this point, so Guns and Tools is being chased around by this Lich. He is not going to get out too quickly, although he is running and jumping straight on top of the Lich. Gonna try and put a lot of pressure on him, but of course he has that refreshing stability now. So even though she stole the stability off him, that's gonna keep coming. He's gonna keep yeah. this pressure on top of Guns and Tours. And the Slick Shoes coming out from uh, Ilya is gonna hold a couple of the enemy team in place, but they're able to get plenty of P-Bar from Guns and Tours. And that's one down for the side of Red Team already in this game. Yeah, good job actually. The prototype got in a bit of trouble as well. Because just as he been, was in a nice position with that Lich Form, and actually Guns and Tours forced him to move down. But the thing is, they actually got the extra kills off as well, and their pro psych is just doing a filthy amount of damage. And look how much that Lich Form and that Power Burst helped. I've got to say, we called it, mate. <laughs> we called it. That was a decision, and it was made, and that was a good decision, going over to Power Necro, because that's really caused a big wipe of the team. But the thing is, the sustain is still good, and uh, we just see Ilya just getting up quickly there, but he's going to go down again, and Amsterdam, in all fairness, probably needs to... He's going to stay on node to just make sure that they're going to keep the point contested. Red team not picking up any points at the moment. Blue team doing a very good job at holding... At sustaining the map, actually better than the more sustained team, to be fair. They should pick up this temple quite quickly now, getting the cap. And they can force back over onto mid as well, so got, still got that fight going. Yeah, and as we keep parking back too, it, it's up to Rena to provide these damage in the fights. And instead of going to this mid fight, she actually found Prototype, maybe a little overextended. Uh, managed to burst him down, but he got rezzed immediately from a stomp that happened on the point previously. <laughs> Um, and then it was his thief, uh, Panda, who came in to back him up. So he ended, he ended, he ended, he ended up surviving that one. He's actually going to be able to force Renner off this point. Now he's fully healed. Uh, Renner does not want to deal with that power necro, just in case she gets caught out by uh, a couple of AoEs into one or two uh, auto attacks there. As this fight in mid is still persisting, of course, both mm -hmm. teams do have a lot of access to some quite tanky players. Um, so it's going to be a while until anything clears up, but the Artful Panda is here, so you are going to see the red team dropping much quicker because they do have that Dagger Pistol Thief to offer up the damage, and as we said, that uh, Amsterdam Flong is going to go down, and I'm pretty sure he's still got Banner of cooldown, yeah. so that's a very nice pickup, and uh, we see a lot of teams doing this now, even if the Banner Warrior is the tankier person on the point at the time, they tend to go for him first, or actually he's going to go for the Vengeance play here, he's going to Vengeance and try and go oh. He has run out of stun breakers though, so he's nice. going to eat that one. And the Emote coming out from Kev, oh, he's going to drop the banner. Oh, uh, so he... that was a nice use of that cooldown. That's going to allow Kev to stay on point a little bit longer. And Alstan's probably just going to smash all of his uh, his shouts there to give Kev a bit of a heal and a bit of a cleanse before he has to go back in. And Guns and Tools is here to back him up now, so they're going to be able to stay in this fight a lot longer. Thanks if, to Amsterdam with that vengeance play. If Guns and Tools wasn't on his way, I don't think that Amsterdam would have used that, that banner. I think he was really yeah. holding out for that actually and I think in the end he made a good decision and like you said you know pump out all those shouts he's going to respawn the villains his cooldowns anyway and that was actually a really good move from Amsterdam in the end that vengeance like he attempted that that was his lich form everything stops backwards and forwards he doesn't have any CC on his team available Knight's the only person there and an updraft is not going to hold these people in place long enough Prototype's forced to come out of lich form which is a little bit too early he used up most of the duration there but now he's just going to get bursted down they don't actually have too many bursty players here, but of course he is a power necro, and like we said before, they are very, very susceptible to any kind of damage. Uh, they are going to get the res here, 
Really nice attempt there, pretty much attempt. That was a very nice res, solid by Knight. Of course, he does have the Vampirism rune, so even if they had burst him down to below 25%, health, he would have continued resing through the uh, through the uh, mist form there. So, blue team nice. holding out for a little bit longer, but I feel like they're making the same mistake they did in the previous game, where they're now just starting to feed the point. They're just bringing more players to the point, and they're slowly getting picked off one by one. And now Knight has used Fire Great Sword, and he's just going to pull completely out of here. Um, forcing them to clear up Argeneer and hopefully get the decap on far perhaps before this happens. But meanwhile, Ren has managed to sneak in behind Tiki and get the decap on this point. And of course, we've seen this happen for a few Sword Dagger Thieves, is that they overstay, well, they don't overstay their welcome, but they stay a bit longer than a Sword oh. Dagger should. Oh my, awful oh, panda. panda. That clip. <laughs> that was a nice clip. Literally, as he was escaping, just came in and just clipped Renner. Didn't need much damage there to, get, to pick him off. A lot of the reliability is on that dodging, and he just got a little bit caught out there. Guns and Swords is actually going to try, he's going to choose to kind of almost sustain around Renner, just for a second, just so the blue team aren't focused on getting the point, and now they actually have to down Renner, and then again, you know, that's kind of delayed even longer. Not too bad movement there from the red team, picking up the two cap uh, in this game. We are about 10 minutes left. We have the spawn of the buff in about one minute, so both teams are going to be kind of aware of that. If Blue Team can pick up that, they will indeed equalize the caps. But the prototype has gone down over on this point as well. Knight tried to go in for the res there. That vampirism... What's the vampirism rune? It wasn't this for good. Okay, so he's actually going to get away there. But he's going to jump back in because Ilya has actually just gone down. They're both kind of just stabbing each other in the face. But prototype's so low and he is going to be finished off there by <laughs> Ilya just, you know, throwing rocks in his face. Why not? That's something to do. Knights in the down state as well. Red team will pick up this point. And each, even renner has gone over to the altar now. And in 30 seconds, stillness is going to pop. If they can get that, they're going to get a six cap on this map. Yeah, Rainer's actually going to get that full cap and just leave it. That's going to force uh, one of the respawning players, and it's actually going to be prototype to go and decap, then fully cap that. That's going to allow red team to get the plus one over here on the midpoint. As we do actually see, I believe that was Amsterdam dropping down below. Yeah, so he's gone down for the bottom buff. Uh, so even if they do get that cap back, he's in position to get this immediately as soon as that comes up. And they have the numbers around the map. They have uh, prototype yeah. being poked a little bit by Rainer, but Rainer can disengage as quickly as she wants. Um, and they're actually going to go for the top buff by with Knight. That might have been a bit of a misplay there, as Amsterdam might well be able to get this full charge. Argeny is coming down, yeah. but he's not going to be in time. They get the Tranquility buff. A bit of a misplay by by <laughs> Asda's there. Not maybe not getting their buff timers down properly, or speaking with each other and letting each other know who's actually going to go and contest Tranquility. I think, to a degree, they were thinking, you know what, guys, we haven't got a cap anyway. And they've got the free cap. And they're, they're not going to actually gain anything out of it other than committing someone down there. And the fact that we're going to just be in a 1v1 and we're going to be losing out on the map. We need like our damage down there. And they they're going to be able to contest it for a long time. I mean, so we have to take one of our support and put them down there. And then we're actually going to have no support for people like Prototype who's not going to be that useful. Um, because, you know, he's got no, he he's got no one hel helping him. Getting rid of those conditions, healing him. So I actually think the blue team made a correct decision in not doing that. I can't remember who did go, f who did get the stillness in the end. We haven't got the pop up for blue, so it must have been the red team. And actually, it's actually not worked out too badly. But saying that, the prototype's in the down state over here on the water. We've got Knight down as well. The prototype has been actually risen here, and they can actually win this fight now over on the water. We're going to see the uh, defensive curve coming back in, realizing that he needs some support. Guns and Tools is getting quite low as well as he tries to actually get some distance. A good job from him. Someone needs to try and chase him here and actually get some damage up. I think the t prototype's probably going to actually do the long route. He is indeed to try and finish him off potentially. He actually uses that flesh worm to ninja back up behind guns and tools. We can see the cap is going to be defended there. How's Temple going? Have we actually seen some action over there? Yeah, on Temple there was a Thief 1v1 that lasted a few years there. Um, Artful Panda managing to eventually get the kill and then steal immediately on that kill to get some, some health oh. back. So both the Thieves <laughs> were down to about 500 health and then the, in the next second Artful oh, Panda had half her health back. She had Arginia coming in to back her up and that was a one fight for them. So they're winning both the side points. So maybe this maybe this Tranquility Call was the right thing. They managed to get the nice splits on afterwards and started to rotate very, very nicely, completely ignoring this midpoint, uh, as they very well should because uh, they needed Tiki and that support of the altar.
the free and, and almost to a degree, you know, the free cap almost forces teams sometimes to overcommit, and that's actually it's it sounds odd, but it's a good time for people to come back because they have to choose, they have to make a good decision of how they're going to split that up, and if it's not confident, then they're going to lose out because they're going to they might in the end end up overcommitting and actually losing in the end. And blue team weren't down by that much, so it's, it was completely possible for them to come back. We're actually going to see another stillness coming up in about 10 seconds here. It was actually moving it to it quite early we've seen the decaps over on the side points the prototypes over here as well as knight and if they can just get the one if they can just get the tick over onto stillness they're gonna we they can actually end up getting a two cap against one because we've got the auto in the contestion at the moment but ticky is down so red team will pick this up so if they do pick up stillness which i'm not sure is going to happen because they've got red team members over here in force three team members are just sustaining it quite well they need to think about what they're going to do now because they're only 40 points behind, but that will slowly increase if Red Team get that stillness. I think Red Team need to make sure they, they move these fights to the points because they now have, mm. I said, I, I, as I was about to say, they now have the two cap. I realize the Artful Panda snuck in behind Curve and managed to steal that point off them. But if they do manage to move it to a point, like we said before, they do have more sustain. So in these team fights on top of points, they'll be able to survive a lot longer. But instead, they're actually just going to have to sacrifice one person to the stillness buff. So it's going to be uh, Ilya versus Knight here. Of course, Ilya has much more potential to knock Knight down and then get the buff. And that might be what he's doing here, but the arm reverse from Knight, beautifully baited, waiting until he saw the animation from Ilya, uh, knowing that he was going to go for that knockdown and then popping the arm reverse. Instead of just immediately, as soon as the stick shoes comes out, uh, baiting that cooldown. So he's going to have a little bit more time to try and stand on this stillness buff and force Ilya to, to make a mistake. We've seen a good example of how powerful a kill can be on this map because the prototype went down over on the altar. We saw the thief, the red team thief, who was plus one, not plus one, that, who was there as well, who got who took down um, prototype, could move straight. He went straight for the decap over on the temple, but blue team did pick up the mid cap. But of course, because they were there and they lost prototype, they did lose the temple in the end. So... They need to do some work here, they need to get that stillness, or they need to get some decaps going, and Red Team are actually really putting them into a place over on this stillness, that's not somewhere they want to be, they're in a team fight here as well, and the prototype needs to think about just moving in, trying to think about the from behind, trying to go for that stillness, but Red Team are just getting a few kills here, they got the kill on Artful Panda, and now they can probably get one over onto um, the prototype, so he needs to try and get into his focus and see what he's planning, he uses that flesh wound to try and get back, but now he needs to get a hit onto the stillness, he should get that channel. Yep, yeah, we're going to see the red team channel. And that is pretty strong. We need to see a decap happening on the temple as soon as possible so that these guys can come back into the game. The prototype is in the down state though as Ilya just kind of wanders past and does a bit more CC as well. And I feel like I think, think red team are going to take this game. All the contestants on their nodes. They've got a team member down. It's not looking great. Yeah, they uh, they made a good play there in terms of fighting over stillness. Sure, because it took them quite a while to take that. Um, they lost out in the caps, mm. uh, but they were actually they were getting people dead. They were getting people on respawn timers, and once enough of them were on respawn timers, they got the stillness buff, and then it was easier to take out the other people. Sure. Uh, they took out Prototype, they've taken out Panda, and I'm sure Knight will be soon to follow as soon as uh, Guns and Tours and Ilya both have their engineer mechanical ways with him. Uh, there is he a might just be able to run away here. There is a last chance. No, there isn't. <laughs> it's not that long. They've got no decap on Temple, which means they do not have a last chance. I was thinking we've really run into the time on this map. We've gone to 2.30 and the other Tranquility come up. Arjun is still going for it. Poor little man. The game's over, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he <didn't> gets it. <laughs> He's got it. They're going to come back. No, no, no. It's all over. Okay, so we're actually going to go to 1-1 uh, one, one here. Um, whoa, just advance that a little bit too fast. Just 1-1. One, one. Um... So, final game. This is definitely a final game. We're going to go to Forest for it. A good, good, good place from Red, actually. They sustained so well. Like you said, that was a good point over on the, um, on the stillness. It's, you know, acting as another cap point. You've got those extra points that are coming in. And actually, to a degree, you know, that, again, that kind of extra, the extra buffs means that you have to split your team even more. So, to a degree, when we were talking about the first map, Splitting your team so much doesn't really benefit Red Team too well. But I don't think they were split as much in that game as they probably should have been. Should have been. Like that tranquility idea from Blue was actually really good to let them have it. And it worked. But then as soon as they went back into, you know, 
the other situations are going back onto the far point in the mid, they started to just lose people. Le Prototype died quite a few times in that game. Um, but yeah, I don't know. How, we can, how do you think we can see the blue team come back into this game? Do you think it's going to be a split across the caps or trying to win the team fights in a different way, maybe a build change up? What do you think we could see changing here? I think they stick with what they had. Like we've been saying, the, the main damage component of red team is their sword dagger thief. Mm. And although people complain about Temple because it's such a huge map, you do get that extra point of contestion in the middle uh, every, every few minutes with the stillness buff, which means especially a sword dagger thief can jump from side nodes to the contestion point in the middle, can drop down to tranquility, get to midpoint, get back again. It, it's very, very easy for a sword dagger thief to move between those points, do the damage that they, they need to, and then either go on to the next fight, or as you said and pointed out many a time, go on for that decap. Yeah. So I think... The map played very nicely for a Sword Dagger Thief. Um, this map, of course, the side nodes are a lot further away from each other. Um, there's no sort of shortcut across the map uh, in terms of blinking to someone fighting at stillness and then blinking on further again. Um, so they're going to have a bit of trouble with mobility here. I think Red Team look to fight on one node and then have maybe their elements list or uh, maybe even Guns and Tools, because as you say, with the Elixir Gun, he's quite sustainable, mm -hmm. uh, and the Holbrook Rune. Have him maybe hold one node, and then the other four fight on a node. They need to force these team fights as they did in the first game, and when they started to bring it back. What they don't need to do, and what Blue Team need to try and make them do, is to overextend. They need to try and pressure all of the nodes as, at, as the once, if they can. Which, I mean, sadly, they're running a Power Necro. If it was a bit more of a more mobile or more evasive uh, Zerka class, then they would be able to do that very nicely because mm. they could leave Prototype even by himself to, to 1v1 someone for a short while while they rotated. However, with this Power Necro, who I'm just going to double check is a Power Necro. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to eat my words. It's a Conditioned Necro, so he is going to be able to sustain Because they actually longer. won. Yeah, they won, the, they won that game when... Uh, they yeah, so even though we called it, and it did seem to be working out very, very nicely. Yeah. Maybe he was just a bit sad that he was getting kited <laughs> so well by... Uh, I Prototype got sad. So cool. <laughs> so we are going to get game three of this grand final of the ESL Weekly number 73 underway between Asdas, as I'm going to call them, and uh, and Red Team. I'm just going to let Jebra go over the splits for a change. <laughs> Guns and Tools hitting up the mine now for the close point, but they're actually going to see the blue team go for that nice split. And actually, that's going to be pretty good for them because if Prototype gets in there, he can probably do, he can, well, not probably, but he will do a lot of damage, but they will stop them before they get over there. Prototype's actually going to have to use that flesh run quite early to reverse. And even using that cooldown of the um, gods, the spectral walk there. Sorry, so actually even add some, add some even more mobility. But that's two big cooldowns already used quite early to avoid a lot of damage coming in onto him over towards the mine. As we also see Arjunir, they split up so hard there as well. But luckily they're going to get back together here. It's quite a good job from Blue. Surprise yeah, there. Blue realizing that they were ready for the counter engage. Um, their plans have been foiled. So just sort of grouping up, or maybe even spreading out a little bit, for the group up on midpoint. They are going to try and look for an opening here, but they are kind of all on the retreat. They were all taking damage as they left that point. Um, and it's actually really going to be Guns and Tools that falls first here. No crate from Ilya to stop that stomp, and that's going to be the first down. It's going to allow Blue to maybe roll over this midpoint. Uh, the tick is now in favour of Blue. I saw uh, Curve manage to get a few ticks on there against Knight himself. Actually winning out this 1v1 uh. very nicely. <laughs> He's going to go jump straight on top of him as well and try and bring him down, but... The stomp onto, uh, oh no, it was a banner, sorry, coming back down to, to make sure he comes back up immediately. Like that. that was so quick that I didn't even realize what happened. Um, yeah. Really, really nice was... banner play coming out there from, uh, from Amsterdam. I oh, know, sorry, nice, from uh, Tiki. Nice CC as well from uh, Ilya using the um, knockback from the turret when he gets destroyed over on the Accelerate Pun turret trait. Just a nice little usage of that, which really interfered with the uh, downing there of. Uh, it was. Uh, sorry. Interfered with the first res attempt, but unfortunately in the end, you know, nothing much stops the banner. You need to watch out for that warrior. That's the main guy to look out for, especially if he's got the cooldown. Remember that the cooldown's happened. He's All right, guys, warrior's going to probably use his banner now. Make sure someone's CCing that guy so that we actually get the confirmed kill, and then we can actually be, you know, actually make something of this in the end. But, you know, 
someone wasn't on it and it was probably because a lot of those CCs were used um, and when you said about not using the crate to get guns and tools up Iliad had already used it over on the um, bottom of the point so blue team did a really good job at coming out and in the end their defensive move would push back in the offensive so that was very very effective in the end for those guys and now Tiki is doing what I love Shaq Warriors doing. After they've blown that big cooldown, they're actually very <laughs> effective solo point holders. He yeah. knows that he doesn't have that banner anymore and that his team can offer maybe not as much support, but they have more CC and they have more damage than he does. So he's going to be one that holds the, the far node. And he actually held it against Guns and Tools and managed to beat Guns and Tools over there. So proving that he can 1v1 with a warrior, no problem whatsoever. He doesn't. He's not just a, a banner bot. He can hold that. Uh, he can hold his respective own by himself. Yeah, Tiki's been really involved in tournaments recently as well. It's good to see him coming in and seeing some good, great play coming out. No one's trying to, no one's really around to help Ilya at the moment. We are going to see the Cleave, I'm um, sorry, Amsterdam actually coming back up there using Vengeance, I do believe. And unfortunately, Ilya is going to go down, so not able to use that. And didn't use his banner. Pro not sure in the end why he didn't. I think he literally went up in Vengeance. And then just literally as he came up, I think Ilya went down, but Guns and Tools going down as well. And that's actually probably a good idea in the end not to go and use that banner because they were just going to lose it. Would have been a big waste of that corner. They're going to be able to pick up mine now. They're not that many points behind. They're going to need to have a little bit of a sensible regroup though, in my opinion. Oh no, they're going to go for the offensive on mid. Oh, this isn't going to be good. Especially with the condition <laughs> Necro just standing up on top, ranging from afar. Keep walking. Actually, maybe you're going to think no? he's going on? No, no, he is going to Oh, I thought he was going to go for <laughs> just thinking that that's perfect for you guys uh, luckily Amsterdam gets there as well as curve so that's actually not too bad for red team but remember they still have a they still have guns and tools out of this map which means you know blue team know that they can equalize that point up at mid send someone to mine that's a good job from night that's a good job from the blue team overall that's a good rotation for them. Yeah, and they're focusing Amsterdam, like we said before. They know he, because he cancelled that banner, that he still has that banner. And yeah. he is the first focus target. Even though there's Curve and Ilya, Ilya is probably the uh, the easiest. Like, actually, even Renner's here. But Renner is not the focus target to begin with. They get that banner out of the way, and then they then they turn their attention to cleaning up the rest of the team. It does cost them a couple of big cooldowns. The prototype was being focused a little bit there and had to put Plague form. But in terms of getting that banner out of the way for this team fight, I mean, this has almost won them this fight. I almost feel for to a degree as well as as if blue team and that's where you can really see like how solid a team are to a degree and I'm not saying that blue team aren't playing well as a team because they have in different points but you can see that that experience of playing together is how it's so important because blue team are supporting genuinely supporting each other you know that defensive move where they came back away from um, the mine even though to a degree they were a bit spun split up but that's you know because of their classes they were quite DPS orientated so they had to to a degree um, when they came back for the defensive move and supported each other as a team they came back very offensively red team could not do that and that rotation to mid was not the best move they were men down on the map being that offensive at that point in time doesn't normally work <laughs> And it didn't. No, certainly not. And they do have the strong two cap coming out. Amsterdam's going to look with cur Curve, rather, to take this midpoint. And they are going to find themselves an Arginia and Ren is there as well. So Arginia's in a lot of trouble. Going to pop that gear shield and the heal. Try and keep up a little bit longer. And there's your misform as well. But he dropped so quickly that that misform propped at about 1%, not 25%. So he's going to go down straight mm. away. Something I quickly noticed and wanted to point out is that Amsterdam is running on my mark instead of fear me. So he himself okay. doesn't have that... Uh, that CC, but he does have the extra sustain, of course, with the shorter cooldown, but also the 10 stacks of vulnerability, and I wonder if that's what made him uh, able to maybe solo guns and tools before. Yeah, that would have probably been a really, really good thing, actually. That maybe gives them a little bit more damage, but I like this, I like Fear Me too much. I know it's a yeah, bit more the, of a cooldown. The CC of Fear Me is very, very nice, but like we've said, they have two engineers. <laughs> yeah. Engineers are sort of the lords of CC right now, even when they're not so running um, Slick Shoes, they still have plenty of CC. And Amsterdam, oh, Amsterdam was about to get that tick there. Really nice uh, ride the lightning by Knight, perfectly timed with a, an updraft and ending the updraft before he fell off the point. So he's going to hold this point with one tick left to go. He's going to pull off now. So just delaying them for a little bit longer. Uh, and he's going to try and pull away safely and soundly uh, as opposed to feeding away another kill and look for the next engage, which is probably going to be in mid because Tiki is going to go ahead and, uh, and cap that one up.
Yeah, Red Team actually doing a good job at just getting the side notes, but it's really late in the day. They've got half the game left, only 150 points left to go. Blue Team can kind of turtle on this point for a bit, actually. They're dub more than doubling their score. They focus on the defense, but they don't want to get pulled into that, you know, that team fight where they could possibly lose that again. They don't want to be in that situation. Um, Red Team have lost the Henge, actually, very easily. They've actually just completely left it. Like... What was what was the plan there? Are they just gonna? They're thinking about switching up the nose completely and not being so offensive, just or maybe like just keeping to two cap and trying to get the D caps and slowly, you know, blue team not let blue team get so many points and actually get a bigger lead, but actually just sustain the game in a very slow way, the same way as they've kind of working with these builds. I mean, they have managed to bleed out uh, Artful Panda, so that's going to be one yeah, down for their sweet. side. If they can then turn this around and. Uh, bring either Argeneer or the Prototype, probably an even better target. If they can bring him down next and just keep it a constant 4v5, then they do have that option to even out the score in mid in terms of numbers, and then just send your Thief to quickly decap close, which means, uh, yeah. far rather, which means that respawn person then has to spend even longer on their way back into the fight to get the recap, uh, by which point you can knock another one out. It's going to be Tiki that they go on this time. I think both of the Warriors have their... Uh, uh, actually, no, Arjuneer was the target, sorry. Arjuneer bring him brought down off point, and Tiki falling quite low as well. And they, they are going for this decap, but it's actually Ilya that's going for it. It's so funny, though, that uh, you, almost, if Ilya wasn't going for that decap, I was literally about to say that, you know, even Blue Team, even though they have, like, had four players on the map, they almost came close. No, they have got the two cap. They've got a two cap with four men on the map. They've actually, they've actually done better with the four men on the map than with five in that situation. That's ridiculous. That's all about that rotation, you know. Red team didn't really move out quick enough. They didn't take advantage of that kill and really didn't. You know, they lost the advantage they had. They had the two cap on the side nodes and they flipped it up to mid. And I know why they didn't go for the... They actually pulled out of Henge because they were getting some kills. So they, obviously the respawns were going to come out. They would have been in a fight over on the Henge. But that would have actually been a good idea because they can sustain those points and feed it. Blue team are going to win this game. They've got the two side nodes. They've taken out Ilya now. There is not... I don't think Red team are going to come back into this. And normally I'm really pro last second comebacks and in very hopeful but I actually genuinely think that red team have made a couple of big mistakes here and that maybe the condi builds working better for prototype you know the fizz <laughs> the fizz the cc wise are helping him a, a lot more with that terror he's gone must have gone for terror surely yes he has um so that's actually very very useful for his own survival so he's actually getting some nice damage off I mean they are against two engineers who are renowned for falling a bit short in terms of CC removal. Yeah. Uh, they have their one stun breaker and that's about it. Um, yeah, they so they can get caught out very, very nicely there. And another thing I want to say, at least for me, my personal MVP has got to be Knight. He was always that person that could read the map, saw what was happening, and he would always be the one that pushed far and at least got the decap, if not the full cap. Meaning that I'm pretty sure only once or twice during that entire game did As does not have a two cap. Um, and like I said, I'm going to put that sort of all, not necessarily all, but Knight certainly played a huge role in that in that two cap play that they were, they were going for. <laughs> Someone said in, my, in uh, the chat in Twitch, uh, holding points is so 2012. <laughs> 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 the game was released like not that long ago. It was. Um, he, the, you're right in map in uh, the chat to a degree, but actually, in the meta and the kind of way that those guys were playing. Holding the cap points is actually a lot more beneficial. I kind of said that earlier as well. Because if they're fighting on the point, they can sustain it and keep it. They don't. They're not focusing mainly on the kills. They're focusing on the sustained team fights, which is what we used to see. Um, whereas the meta has moved around that now, so the damage and the killing off point doesn't really suit the teams that much because they can't kill that quickly to get the decaps. They can't kill that quickly to get where they want to be, so they have to defend. So in the end there, not sustaining on those two side nodes that they had didn't bring them back into the game as much as I would have probably had hoped to have seen.